Today I'm going to share with you a passage of scripture that just issued the knockout blow to my thinking that I had to earn God's favor. I tell you, these verses impacted me in a powerful way. I think they'll have the same effect on you, so stay tuned for the gospel truth. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that emphasizes God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my second week of teaching through the book of Romans. And we've still got a few weeks to go. I've got a brand new book out entitled Grace, The Power of the Gospel. I've got a workbook that goes along with that. And then we've also got this uh, album, CD album, that we're offering on this subject. I really encourage you to get this material because I think that this is essential. I mean, basic, practical stuff that every single person needs to know. And if you are off in this area, if your faith isn't 100% in what Jesus did, if you get to where you start putting faith in what you do, then I tell you what, that is an inroad of Satan into your life. It just short circuits the entire power of God. Nothing works. And that is exactly what the book of Romans was written to um, counteract. And so this is a powerful teaching. We got through Romans chapter 5 and verse 14. I want to deal with the rest of the verses in Romans chapter 5 on today's broadcast. And let me just introduce, it, introduce this by saying that these verses right here just radically transform my life. I had been studying the book of Romans, and not just Romans, I'd been studying the grace of God. And I came from a background where it was all about your performance. You had to do all of these things right in order to be accepted by God. And it was ground into me that, boy, you had to be holy, and you, your holiness was directly proportional to your actions. I didn't understand an imputed holiness that being made righteous by faith in the Lord, I thought I had to earn my righteousness. And so when I started seeing this glimpse of the gospel, I saw it, and intellectually, I saw that it was there. I mean, there's just an abundance of scriptures on it. But it was when I got to Romans chapter 5, beginning with verse 15 through the end of the chapter, this is what just like was the last nail in the coffin of this religious mindset that I had to earn right standing with God. And these verses, I still remember exactly where it was. I'd been studying scriptures on the grace of God for a week or so. I mean, 10 to 12 hours a day meditating in it. Intellectually, I could see it, but I couldn't embrace it because how could this be? And in this chapter, in Romans chapter 5, beginning with verse 15, there are five different verses that basically make a comparison and say, if you can accept that you were born with your natural birth a sinner, then you have to accept that when you get born again, you are born again righteous. It's not something you earn. It's created and put in you. Ephesians 4.24 says, Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says that Jesus has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. Jesus is my righteousness. It's not about my individual acts producing righteousness. I am in right standing with God. I'm righteous because I was born again righteous, because Jesus gave me his righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he, God the Father, made him, Jesus, to be made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Not in ourselves, but in him. I was made righteous through what he did. Now, see, I saw those verses, but these verses are the ones that God just really used to solidify this in my life. So let's look at some of these. Romans chapter 5, verse 15, it says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. That's just an old English way of saying he's making a comparison, but uh, in one sense it's an opposite comparison. Sin entered into the world through one man, 
and righteousness entered into the world through one man, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the same way that every person who has been born of Adam was born a sinner, in the same way every person that has been born of God is born righteous. Boy, those are powerful statements. So he says, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead. This isn't talking about only physical death. Yes, physical death hath passed upon mankind because that's a result of sin. But this is talking about our spiritual death, our spiritual separation from God. And we were born separated from God through the offense of one. Again, I mentioned this on our program yesterday up in verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Most people think that it's their individual actions that made them have a sinful fallen nature. But it's the opposite. It's your sinful nature that you were born with that produces these actions of sin. And this is the same thing that verse 15 is saying. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, that's talking about we all receive this sinful nature separated dead from God. It says much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Now, see, this is why these verses impacted me in such a profound way. Because I had accepted without question. I was raised in this. It was just something that I embraced from the time I was old enough to even understand anything. I knew that it wasn't my actions of sin that made me a sinner. I knew I was born a sinner, separated from God. I knew that. And this is basically saying it's kind of like a coin. If you accept that the head on a coin is uh, real, well, then there's a flip side to it. And if you're going to accept that half of that coin is real, well, then the back side has to be real too. There's a flip side to this. If you are going to accept that you were born a sinner, then you have to accept that you are born again righteous. And see, when it was put in that terminology, when um, Paul made this comparison, I would have been a hypocrite to accept one side of this coin and then not accept the other side, to accept one half of this truth and not accept the other half of that truth. And so I had seen this, that the Bible says I was created righteous, Ephesians 4, 24, that Jesus is my righteousness, 1 Corinthians 1, 30, that through Jesus I am now the righteousness of God in Him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, many other scriptures. I had seen that, but I just couldn't grasp it. It seemed so contrary to everything I'd been taught. But when I saw this, I said, God, to keep from being a hypocrite, it's wrong that I accept that I am born a sinner, but I won't accept that I'm born again righteous. I feel like I've got to earn it. It was hypocritical. And if you understand what's being said, he says this exact same thing five different times in this chapter in such a way that if you really believe the Word of God, you're just going to have to bow the knee to what the Word says and accept it. Whether this seems right, whether it's what you've been taught or not, this is what the Word of God says. So in verse 16, he says the same thing again. He says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Condemnation entered the world through Adam's sin, not just through your sin, but through Adam. All of us have been separated. All of us have been condemned. All of us have been under the judgment of God prior to being born again. And if you accept that, well, then you have to accept that through Jesus that we have now received this gift, this free gift is what it says. Again, it's the emphasis is on that you don't get this righteousness, this right standing with God based on any merit of your own. It's not about what you deserve. It's a free gift. If it's a gift, then you can't do anything to add to it. If you try and add to it, you'd take away from it. You know, we give our tapes away. Now, we encourage people and say that it's a suggested donation, but over 50% of all of the people who contact us don't give a penny. And you know what? We give 
our materials away. And I've done this for 30-something years. I've given away over 5 million teachings, books, albums, different type of things. And uh, so anyway, it's a gift on my part. But I had this woman write in to me one time, and she says, you know, nobody is going to pay my way. I pay my own way. She says, I want these three tapes you're offering, but you send me a bill for them. So we sent her the tapes and didn't send her a bill. Then she wrote in. She says, I don't know if it was a mistake or what, but again, nobody pays my way. So I've got those first three tapes. Now I've got three more tapes. You send me a bill for them. We sent her those second three tapes. Didn't send her a bill. Finally, she wrote in, and she was just irate, and she says, how dare you do this? She says, if you don't bill me for these tapes, I'll never get anything from you again. She says, I pay my way. You tell me what those tapes are worth. And, you know, I personally contacted this lady back, and I said, lady, my teaching is worth more than you have money to buy. You hadn't got enough money to buy it. I said, this will change your life. It could make a difference in your eternal destiny. I said, you're either going to have to receive them free or you can't buy them from me. Now, I said, you can give an offering. I said, we'll receive an offering to help us put out the word. But I said, you can't buy my materials. And this lady, as far as I know, never responded to us again. But see, when I say it's a free gift then I encourage people to give. Well, the Lord, He gives us salvation freely, and He wants us to respond. And yes, He wants us to live for Him and witness and do things. But you aren't buying. You aren't earning God's favor. Those things are just a response to what God has already done. And if you try and make it that I do deserve it, I am not going to receive anything free, then you can't get salvation. Boy, that is powerful truth. Andrew's complete teaching on Romans is available in a brand new book from Harrison House Publishers titled Grace, The Power of the Gospel. You can request a copy when you send a gift of seven pounds or more. A companion study guide is also available for a gift of 18 pounds or more. This teaching is also available in a four-part tape or CD album, or you can order a DVD version recorded from television. The first tape or CD in the four-part teaching is available for a donation of three pounds or more. But for those unable to send a gift, Andrew and his partners will provide this first audio teaching free of charge. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922 473 300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. And now, Gospel Truth continues. So, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, here's the third time that the Apostle Paul says the exact same thing. He just uses a different uh, wording, but he's saying the exact same thing. In verse 17, he says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Again, pay attention. He's not saying that it is your offense that caused you to die physically and spiritually. It says one man's offense. It was what Adam did. It's the sin that entered into the entire human race, this sin nature that causes death. So it says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Man, I love that. I think that every one of us has to recognize that just by being born a human, you inherited weakness, you inherited... Uh, attitudes and things that are wrong. It seems like we all share this, and most of us have come to peace with that. We've embraced it. You just know that we were born a sinner. Well, it says in the same way that that came upon all man through one man through Adam, you didn't do anything to make it happen. Now, you have since validated Adam's sin. You've gone out and sinned on your own, and you become a willing participant in this. So I'm not saying that there is no guilt or no accountability on your part, but I'm saying you inherited this nature for sin is what these verses are talking about. 
Well, in the same way that you've accepted that and come to grips with it, and by observation, you just know it to be true, it says in the same way they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, here again is a gift righteousness, not a works righteousness, not a I earned it righteousness, Right standing with God, righteousness is given to us as a gift. The only thing we have to do is believe. It says it's a gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And it says much more. If you can accept that you became a frail human being by being born on this earth, when you get born again, you become the righteousness of God, infused with all of the power of God, not because you've deserved it. It's not something you're growing into. You just were born a sinner. You were born righteous. You were born in right standing with God, born just as if you'd never sinned. Boy, those are powerful statements. Again, that's the third time that he said this same thing, the rep repetition of this. I believe is just underscoring how essential this is, how non-negotiable this is. This isn't an isolated truth. This isn't something I'm picking out of Scripture and taking out of context. He's saying this over and over and over again. Here he is saying the same thing again in verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now here again is the truth that most people haven't fully understood and appreciated, but it says that it was the offense of one, talking about Adam's original sin, brought judgment upon all men to condemnation. Again, this is not the way that most people think. Most people think, no, it's what I've done. Oh, God, I, look what I've done. Look how terrible I am. How could you have anything to do with me because of my sin? It's not your individual sins that God is looking at. It's that sin nature. It's your propensity for sin. And God dealt with that. And when you get born again, God takes that sin nature away. But in the same way as it wasn't those individual actions that brought condemnation and death, it was the sin of one man, talking about Adam. Adam's sin, it says, judgment came upon all men unto condemnation. And in the same way, some people say, well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, in a way it's not, but it's just the way that it is. But you know what? If I learned this in math, that if you have an equation over here, and if, you know, X plus Y equals Z or something, well, if one side of the equation is true, the other side has to be true, if it's a true mathematical equation. If it's true that we just received a sin nature and were separated and judgment came upon us, not because of our individual actions of sin, but because of what uh, Adam did. If that's true, well, then it's also true that through one man, Jesus and his goodness and his righteousness that we can all be made righteous and, and in right standing with God. If one is true, the other one is true. And so in a sense, this fact that we were all plunged into the same sin and into the same, um, you know, situation is actually a blessing because that means one man produced all of this corruption in the world. One man can reverse all of it in your life if you will just accept it. Of course, one man, Jesus, could reverse the cor corruption and the pollution of the entire world if everybody would accept him, but they haven't. But that's what this is saying, verse 18. It was one man's offense that brought judgment and condemnation, and it was by the righteousness of one that the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. Here again is like the fourth time that he said this. It's a free gift justification. Righteousness is not something you deserve. It's not something you earn. In verse 19, for if by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, what was it that made you a sinner? Oh, well, I went out and I lied and I cussed and I dro uh, drank and I smoked and I committed adultery. Nope, those things didn't make you a sinner. You were born. That's what made you a sinner. And then you acted out your nature. 
This says, by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I don't know about you, but when I read this five different times, just verse after verse after verse, it was just like, you know, if you were fighting somebody, you might be able to withstand one punch. But boy, if they hit you just five times, boom, 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 like that, it was just a knockout blow. I was reading this, and I said, God, how can I sit there and deny the fact that I am born righteous? I'm not earning righteousness. I'm not in the process of becoming righteous. You produced righteousness. It's a free gift. Boy, these verses just gave the KO, uh, the knockout, to the condemnation and the guilt in my life. And then in verse 20, he says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Now, most people think that the law entered to decrease the offense. Nope, it didn't. It increased the offense. Again, I wish I had time to go into that, but that's a powerful truth. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. See, some people, when you start talking about the grace of God and how God loves us and gives you right standing with Him, not based on your performance, people will just say, but yet that doesn't work for these people that have done these big sins. What about these big sinners? What about the people that have done these terrible things? This says where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Some people have made sin so bad that it's bigger than the grace of God. I'm not trying to minimize sin at all, but I'm saying that God's grace is infinitely greater than your sin. The payment is greater than the debt that was owed. One drop of Jesus' blood is worth more than the sin of every individual on this planet for all eternity. The holiness of God is so holy that it overwhelms all of the unholiness and ungodliness of this planet. I guarantee you, Jesus paid a price. It's all available. It's just a matter of will you receive it. In verse 21, it says that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin is something that all of us inherited. And how did it reign? It reigned unto death, and it says it was through the law. The law is what strengthens sin. Well, likewise, now grace reigns through understanding our right standing with God unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. If you understand that Jesus has made you righteous and it is not something that you are in the process of earning and trying to achieve, it was a gift. It was given unto you at salvation. And if you accept that, that in the same way you were born a sinner, now you have been born again righteous. If you understand that, then grace, that's everything that God is and everything He has, everything that He's accomplished for you, it will begin to reign like a king. It'll dominate. It'll rule. It'll control you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, that's powerful. If you don't understand that God has made you righteous, that it's something that He gives you as a gift. It's not something you have to earn. If you don't understand that, then I'm saying this in love. I'm not trying to condemn, but I, you haven't even started in the Christian life. You may have been at it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You may have prayed when you were a child, but if you don't understand this, if you are trying to become worthy instead of thanking God that He made you worthy and made you worthy as a gift, then you haven't even started to understand the gospel. And going back to Romans chapter 1, verse 16, that's why you don't have power working in your life. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Grace is the power of the gospel. And if you could understand these things that we've been talking about, I guarantee you it would make the power of God begin to start flowing in you. You would start receiving things that before were out of your reach just because you begin to understand the gospel. You know, today's the last day we're going to offer the power of the gospel. We'll continue to offer the album entitled The Gospel, The Power of God. And we're going to continue to offer my new book, on this grace, the power of the gospel, and also a workbook that goes along with it. So listen to our announcer. He'll give you that information. And then join me again next Monday as we continue the gospel truth. 
Andrew's complete teaching on Romans is available in a brand new book from Harrison House Publishers titled Grace, The Power of the Gospel. You can request a copy when you send a gift of seven pounds or more. A companion study guide is also available for a gift of 18 pounds or more. This teaching is also available in a four-part tape or CD album, or you can order a DVD version recorded from television. The first tape or CD in the four-part teaching is available for a donation of three pounds or more. But for those unable to send a gift, Andrew and his partners will provide this first audio teaching free of charge. Let me remind you once again that today is our last day to offer you the power of the gospel as a free gift. Now we offer the album for a donation of any amount. We encourage a donation for the individual tape in the album, but if you cannot or would not give anything, we'll give you this teaching in the set free of charge. We also have our book and workbook that are still available, so please call or write today. Our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Our telephone number is 01922 473 300, and website orders can be placed at www.awme.net. We hope to hear from you today. I'd like to give a special invitation to all of our full-time ministers watching this program to come join me on November the 5th through the 7th in England. We're going to be holding a minister's conference with Pastor Bob Yandian. Charlie and Jill LeBlanc will be doing praise and worship along with my wife. It's going to be in Buxton. This is in Derbyshire, England at the Paramount Palace Hotel, November the 5th through the 7th at Derbyshire, England. I'd like to invite you to check out our website. It is a powerful ministry tool. I've had my staff put a lot of effort into this, and I tell you, it is a place where you can get resources to help you in your relationship with the Lord. We have about seven years worth of television programs there, about 10 years worth of radio programs that you can view or listen to right on the internet. I've got uh, about three to 400 of my teachings are available as free downloads. You can also get all of my study Bible commentary. If you'll sign on to the website and give us a testimony, I read those website entries nearly every single day. And it would be a blessing to me and it'd be a blessing to you. Be sure to tune in Monday for more gospel truth. If you are preaching the gospel the way that the apostle Paul preached it, then a logical question from grace teaching ought to be, are you just saying that we should live in sin? Of course, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what the Apostle Paul said. But if that question never comes up, you aren't hearing the same gospel that the Apostle Paul preached. You aren't hearing the true gospel. And you know what? There's a lot of churches today. There's a lot of preachers preaching that nobody, nobody in their church ever has this thought come to them. Can I just live in sin because God loves me by grace and all I've got to do is receive it by faith? Can I just live in sin? There's many people that that thought has never come to them before because they haven't ever heard the true gospel. That's Monday on Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack.